So GST is great for the country. It helps. It's the fuel to the fire of India and I'm happy about it. But guys, GST makes things expensive. Every time you go out to a restaurant, there is GST and you'll end up paying more. Every time you come for a lecture of mine, you'll end up paying a little more GST except this free YouTube video that you're watching today. But there are some lucky people who are exempted from GST. These lucky people, they provide goods, they provide services, but the government is not expecting any GST from them. Who are these? Which are these goods? Who are these services? Which are these services? Who are these people? Who are the lucky exempted ones is what we're going to look in this video. This video covers all the exemptions that you need and your CA inter as well as CA final exams. So watch this video covers all the exemptions. I've explained all the exemptions. I've used the QuickBook and ICI material as the base. I've solved each and every illustration of ICI material in this as well as the questions at the end so that you are well versed with the entire chapter. What do you need to do with this chapter? Nothing, honestly, handed in notes can be copied. Otherwise, whenever you want to revise this chapter, just switch on this video and revise it with me. So this is a chapter called exemption. Let's dive right away without wasting any time. What is exemption and how does it work in GST? So first up, uh, this chapter, exemptions. Uh, um, exemptions are of two kinds. One is of goods, but basically goods exemption is not in GST. Uh, exam. So that means, uh, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, etc., your milk, um, some random things, slippers, whichever are exempt, doesn't matter because it's not in the exam. So we don't have to start worry about that. Next comes services. Services are very important from an exam perspective, roughly about four to eight marks of your GST paper. Yes, so 50 marks at enter and 100 marks at final. Out of that, about eight marks will come from this chapter and enter about five to eight marks come from this chapter. So it's a really important chapter and it's a practical chapter. So that's a really nice thing. So the importance level is five on five. It's a very, very important chapter. That is how it is. Almost compulsory every year there is one question from this chapter. So it's almost compulsory. And the best part, it's a very practical question. So if, if it's exempt, you write an exempt. If it's taxable, you calculate the tax amount. And that's how we are supposed to answer. You will see the questions asked in the exam because we'll be doing those exam questions as well. So without wasting much time, let's see what is exemptions. First, what is exemption? Actually, GST has three ends or exempt supply has three ends. What is this? This is a shortcut. Let me explain. Most of you guys already know it. Exempt supply has three ends. What is these three ends? Three ends is first those which is nil. That means there is no GST on this. There is nil GST on this. Next category are those goods and services which are not taxable like your petrol, diesel, etc. are not taxable. This includes your Schedule 3 as well. And last, which are exempted via notification, which we will study in this chapter. So basically there are three ends, one, two and three. Are all of them exempt? Yes. So whenever we talk about exempt supplies, includes all three. Yes, it includes all three. But what is the difference? The only difference is here. That, like there are three classrooms in this institute. The first floor, the second floor and the third floor. They're all CA classes only, but different, different compartments. Same way, nil is when zero duty, non-taxable is schedule three and others. And notification is what we are going to be studying today. What is a the notification? There is a notification number 12 of the year 2017. Very important. Yes, you need to buy hard this notification number. It is through this notification the government said that these, these, these services will be exempt. So whenever you write the exemption chapter, some uh, answer in the exam, you have to quote this exemption section, section, uh, sorry, notification number 12 of 2017. Keep it in mind. If you want to copy handwritten notes, you already have the drive link. Go into the folder and start copying the handwritten notes. Now, guys, the section, uh, not important, but section 11 is a section uh, for exemptions. And also there are some exemptions which are specific and some exemptions which are general. Not important, but you should know what this is. Specific basically means they are giving it only to a certain industry or to a certain company. Example, let's say when COVID hit us, vaccine had to be made cheaper. So they said, okay, specifically this company's vaccine will be exempted from GST. General basically means everything or everyone. Example, all doctors will be exempted from GST. So that's a general exemption. This is a specific exemption. Don't worry, this will not be asked in the exam. They will ask you uh, the exemptions and not what are exemptions. They'll ask you particular exemptions. Let's start with the first one. And the first exemption that we're going to learn is something which is very, very simple. I'll start very simple performance of an artist. So right now I'm looking at Instagram stories where there's a band called Coldplay which is performing in Bangkok. There are lots of people which perform in India. Bangalore is a hub, Mumbai is a hub, Delhi is a hub. For all these people who come from abroad, 
who are uh, you know musicians etc and they perform so is that going to be exempt example let's take two examples one is hema malini and one let's take some someone like uh, b prak or let's say hani singh or someone like that or uh, um, the nation's favorite any popular singer let's call arjit singh now they are performing and when they are performing they are not talking about the tickets you buy to see their performance but talking about the amount paid to them will that be exempt so they said that performance of an artist has three conditions if all three are fulfilled then we will not charge any gst on the amount paid to them or charged by them first condition is they should be charging up to 1.5 lakh rupees per show so hema malini of course will not be charging so much arjit singh again will not be charging so much but up to 1.5 lakh per show only second it should be basically a indian classical tdc what is tdc theater dance and uh, this is a concert so it should be theater dance and concert which is indian classical so arijit singh of course is not doing indian classical hema malini may do indian classical and third it should be not as a brand ambassador of any brand so it should be performed not as a brand ambassador so example hema malini let's say is charging 70000 she is doing indian classical dance performance and she is not doing it as a brand ambassador of kentaro hema malani is, is very popular for kentaro then if all these three conditions are fulfilled then amount paid to hema malani will be exempt arjit singh obviously not hani singh obviously not bacha definitely not all these don't do indian classical so their amount will be taxable this is the first one this is performance by an artist let's quickly go to the quick book as well and let's see from the quick book as well uh, what is it and then we'll also look at icm material this is performance by an artist here we go this is artist in areas of classical dance music art up to 1.5 lakh per event is exempt western dance music art is taxable as a brand ambassador is also taxable these are illustration there is a question number 5 on it so let's immediately go to the icm material and target that as well so performance by an artist again i'm not going to read all this let's straight away go to the illustration determine the gst payable if any in each of the following independent cases assuming that the rate of gst is 18% and the service providers are registered bollywood dance straight away it will be taxable carnatic music indian classical uh, to promote a brand taxable carnatic music by a classical singer uh, 155 unfortunately taxable kathak classical singer cultural program consideration 145 the last one will be exempt you will quote notification number 12 of 2017 this year's illustration number 3 there is another question also but we'll do all the questions together this is performance by an artist let's go to the second one the second exemption now that you're getting a hang of exemptions <coughs> i'm going to first take a few simple ones and then we'll graduate to more difficult ones the next one is basically entry to an event So let's see what is this entry to an event. Guys, there is an event happening. Lots of event keeps happen keep happening. Zomato has Zoman Zoma Land. Uh, lots of other events keep happening across India, and you are buying an entry ticket to enter that event. Will that have GST? I generally think like the government. The government says that listen, if you are spending, why should we exempt you? So that will have GST. Accept this. So there is a shortcut here. A friend is asking you where are you going this weekend, and you tell him nothing much. I am going to a wildlife. tiger safari or wildlife tiger zoo what is the shortcut i'll tell you when you are entering a national monument like the statue of unity in gujarat if you're going for that will you be charged money yes but there will be no gst if you're going to a tiger reserve there will be no gst on the entry ticket and if you're going to a zoo guys there will be no entry ticket on that uh, there will be no gst on their entry ticket so nothing but tiger zoo is one second one next weekend again your friend asked you what is the plan this weekend you told him listen tdc is presenting planet sports so you are going to be sitting home and watching this sports program tdc presents planet sport what is this let's see first you are entering into an event which is a theater dance and a concert again indian classical so here it's not the artist here it's you you are buying a ticket there will be a ticket price but there will be no gst present basically are award shows award shows again there will be no gst on that planetariums if you go to any planetarium there will be entry ticket but there will be no gst and sports organized by recognized sporting bodies like bcci etc on the ticket prices will there will be no gst but ipl tickets have gst so what is this this is up to 500 rupees the second category tdc presents planet sports will be exempt only if it's up to 500 so this is the condition of the second category <laughs> 
let's quickly recap entry to an event nothing much tiger zoo which is basically without any limit even if it's 600 rupees it will be exempt and tdc presents panel sports in this case the entry ticket is exempt if it's up to 500 rupees so if you're going for ipl and the ticket price is 750 there will be gst 450 no gst let's watch this or let's see this from your admission to various events admission into a national monument tiger safaris and zoo and this is tdc presents planet sports by the way this tdc has a small amendment or an addition tdc has another c here a circus as if you're going to a circus also up to 500 rupees there will be no gst let's take the questions from here this is zoo all right let's see where else is the zoo mentioned Let's check if there's any question attached here. No, there is no question attached here. That's about it. Let's move to the next one. That is the third one. So good going till now. Let's move ahead. Keep doing 1-1 exemptions and complete all the exemptions at one go. Perfect. Let's go to the third one now. The third one, I'll target something slightly easy. Again, let's take life insurance. You all know what is life insurance. Basically, life insurance is a policy. You go to a life insurance company or you go to an agent and you take this policy so that if something happens to you, your family can be taken care of. They give some assure to your family members. This life insurance, uh, although it is uh, something that is important, the government thinks that there should be GST on it. So if you go to HDFC Life and you buy life insurance and you pay premium on that premium, there will be GST. So then what is the exemption? The exemption are for important people. That is armed forces. Their life is very important and they sacrifice the life for the nation and hence their policy taken by the government on that there will be no GST. So this is exempt. Next, police personnel. Police personnel also their life is in danger and they dedicate their life. Uh, of course, police personnel are very uh, sometimes uh, uh, teased etc. for the bribes they take. But otherwise guys, generally police personnel, they dedicate their lives to the country and hence even their life insurance they take is exempt. Of course, guys, remember, this is not all the private insurance. This is the government insurance, which is exempt. Next is a very important one and a very different one. If it's a micro life insurance, what is micro life insurance? Micro basically means small when the amount assured, some assured is up to 2 lakh rupees. So if the amount assured is up to 2 lakh, that means the amount is small. In that case, the amount with the policy premium that you pay will be exempted. This is life insurance. Let's take life insurance from here as well. So I'll type micro and we'll see micro life insurance. All right. Any other government scheme also it is exempted. So here we go. This is all life insurance. National, uh, this will come ahead. Army, Navy, Air Force insurance, a Naval Group insurance. All these are government. Janashri Bhima that is one pro tip. Anything offered by the government, why will they want to make it more expensive? So it will be exempted from GST. So if you see any Pradhan Mantri, any Pradhan Mantri scheme, obviously it will be exempt from GST. But only thing is your life micro insurance up to 2 lakh rupees is exempt, something that you should know here we go. So this is what it is. All this will come ahead. This is this is general insurance. What we just covered was a life insurance. All right. Next, let's cover general insurance. It's also another very small. So we'll just number them and we are the fourth exemption. This is called general insurance. What is this general insurance and is it exempt? Example, guys, most of you guys are students and you ride a bike. On that bike, you know, insurance is compulsory. And when you go to buy that insurance policy or to pay a premium, on that there is GST, yes. Sometimes your family takes health insurance, so that that premium also has GST, yes, unfortunately. So then which is the general insurance which does not have GST? The main ones are all government schemes. Example, insurance for the tribal, some insurance for women, some insurance for hut, some insurance for agriculture land, some insurance for tube well, all these government schemes insurance and the insurance for the needy people. Why am I writing like this? Because you don't need to buy hard it. If, as long as you see the need and you see the government schemes, they will be exempted. But a very notable difference is this export credit guarantee. 
Now, what is this? When you export to many countries of the world, what is the guarantee you'll get the money? So this also you take an insurance, export credit guarantee insurance, that if some, the person abroad does not pay you, then this insurance company will pay you. And this export credit guarantee insurance is also exempted. Generally, because it's connected to export, they do this. So let's read about general insurance here. Hut insurance, cattle insurance, tribal insurance. You don't need to buy hut, by the way, guys. You will see the need, needy people and government insurances are exempt. So these are all the exemptions. Perfect. So that's the fourth one covered. Now let's move to the fifth one. I'm just randomly choosing different, different. And this one is very important. I am predicting this to be an exam question, banking and financial services. Let's see what are the exemption in banking and financial services. Let's ask yourself guys, what is the service that you use with a bank? You go open an account, then you deposit money, you withdraw money. Sometimes you have a debit card, sometimes you have a credit card, you have a checkbook, etc. And you deal with a bank. What is the amount? What is the one which is exempted guys? Any loan amount. Obviously, it is money and you know money is neither goods nor services. So, this is completely exempt. So, if you go to a bank and you take a loan to buy the new iPhone 15 Pro Max, on that there is no GST. Next, any interest that you earn from the bank or any interest that you pay. So, interest earned or interest paid. On that interest amount, there is no GST. So, on that loan you've taken from the bank, they charge you interest. On that, there is no GST. It is exempt. Now, interest has different words. They also call it finance charges. They also call it bill discounting. What is bill discounting? It's very simple. You have a bill of 1 lakh rupees. You go to a bank or a money lender and they discount it for 98,000 and they keep that 2,000. Basically, that's an interest indirectly charged to you or check discounting. All that, guys, is nothing but interest only. So, interest is basically exempt. But there is an exception. I'm writing the exception here. If the interest is on credit card, Guys, the government does not look like you using credit card just like your parents. So if you're using credit card and you li you are liable to pay any interest, that will be taxable. So I'm putting the exception here. Next, guys, you go to a bank and the bank basically deal with each other as well. Yes. So SBI bank will go to Kotak bank and buy dollars. So when they buy interbank dealings, one bank with the other in Forex, specifically with Forex, it's completely exempt. So there is no charge here. So there is any interbank forex transaction that is completely exempt. Guys, something that is a change and this is very, very important. Guys, the bank, which is the biggest bank of India, the watchdog of all the banks, RBI. RBI also provides certain services, not to you and me, but they provide services to other banks. When they provide services earlier, it used to be exempt. Now it is taxable, guys. RBI services are now taxable, something that you should keep in your mind. Next, we move ahead to what else is exempt here. Guys, there is an account called Basic Services and Bank Deposit Account, which is also called like the Jandhan account or this is called the No Frills account. Guys, this account is very simple and in this account, any services that you get will be completely and always exempt. Next, guys, any extra charges, example, you withdraw a lot from the ATM, so there are extra charges, you ask for additional checkbooks, so sometimes there are extra charges. Any other extra charges by the bank will be completely taxable. So exemption is only for BSBDA, yes. Guys, whenever you go to a shop and you use your debit card, credit card and you swipe, sometimes the shopkeepers say that, listen, we'll have to charge you a little extra because the bank charges some amount. Yes. But the government or the exemption says that up to 2,000 rupees if you swipe your card. So let's say you go to buy a t-shirt worth 800 rupees and you swipe your card for 800 rupees. Will the bank charge the merchant something? Yes, but there will be no GST. Up to 2,000 rupees charge on your debit card, credit card. On that, there will be no GST. Obviously, you have to pay the money, but there will be no GST on that. This is all banking and financial services. There is one SEZ point. Uh, so banks, etc. and SEZ, there will be an exemption when they provide services abroad. But that's only for CA final, not for CA inter students. Let's see what else is there in banking and financial services. Here we go. Banking and financial services is here. Yes. Forex, services of sale and purchase of Forex between banks is exempt. Interest, invoice, check discounting is exempt. BSBD uh, services are exempt. Up to 2,000 transactions are exempt. Yes. And guys, banks have to reach every corner of the country. But they can't, of course, have a branch in every corner of the country. So they have people called business correspondent and bank facilitators. I repeat, business correspondent and bank facilitators. Who are these people? They are people like a school principal. They are people like the postmaster who basically help banks reach out to customers. 
Now, will they do the work for free? No, why should they do a work for free? So let's say you're a bank correspondent, you're the principal of a small school in a village and you give banking services or you help some bank to give services to customers. You will charge some money, but on that money, there will be no GST. This is exempt, but only if it is to rural branches. Very important in the exam. So if they say BC and BF for rural branches, services will be exempt from GST, but otherwise urban branches will be taxable. Next, any processing fees, service charge, minimum balance charges are all taxable. Interest on credit cards is taxable. And interchange fees on card settlement shared by banks is taxable. Basically, or anything to do with credit card, it will be taxable. There's an ICI illustration. Let's have a look at that. I'm just going to Google Forex here. And we will get that Forex word here. Foreign exchange. Yes. All right, let's read banking and financial services. We'll not read, we'll straight away go to the question only because all of this has been explained. All right. X sells a mobile phone to Y. <clears throat> the cost of the mobile phone is 40,000. Basically, you go to Samsung and you buy a mobile phone. However, X gives Y an option to pay in installments 11,000 every month before the 10th of the following month. Basically, you're paying EMI. But this is EMI not from a bank, from Samsung. Uh, and as if there is a delay, then you will have to pay additional interest of 500. Guys, in this case, the amount of penal interest to be included in the value of supply, yes, and there will be GST, yes, because this is not a bank, this is Samsung giving it to you. But on the other hand, if the same thing, but there is a bank uh, here, in that case, if the loan has been taken from the bank on that interest, there will be no GST. This is something that you should keep in mind. Illustration, Apna Bank Limited, a scheduled commercial bank as one of the following details for the month of August. Let's see what this is. Extending housing loan to our customers. Will there be any GST? No, this will be exempt. Processing fees, taxable. Commission collected on bank guarantee. Guys, commission is like uh, interest, etc. Uh, interest income on credit card. Guys, anything to do with credit card will be taxable. So I'm just going to remove the one which is exempted. This one, 100 is exempted. Processing fees, taxable. Commissions, taxable. Interest income on credit card, taxable. Interest received on housing loan is exempt. Minimum balance charges, taxable. So here we go. This is 20, 30, 40, and 1. These are the four amounts that will be taxable. This is how you need to present computation of value of taxable outward supply of Messrs. Apna Bank. And wherever it is exempt, you'll write nil. And wherever it is taxable, you'll write the amount. And you'll total it up and then multiply by 18%. If they've only asked for value, you will just give the number. If they ask for the tax liability, then multiply with the GST rate. Perfect, guys. Good going. We are five down. Let's do a quick recap. Banking services, remember a big change. RBI services are now taxable. Remember, any credit card interest will be taxable. Other interest will not be taxable. And remember, any other charges like uh, checkbook charges, etc. will be taxable. So this is the fifth one, which is banking and financial services. Over to the next five in just about one minute. The next one is something which is not a very happy thing. The next one is health services, hospitalization. So let's understand what is this health services. So a small story which I'm just going to tell you. So let's understand what is health services. Health services is basically when someone's not well. Imagine you're riding your bike, you meet with an accident. Unfortunately, all fingers crossed. This is only a fictional story. I hope it never happens. But you met with an accident and someone said, listen, your leg is broken. They need to take you to a doctor. So they called an ambulance. And you were taken in an ambulance in a stretcher and the ambulance charged you money. But good part about the only good part about this is the ambulance, the amount will be exempted from GST. So ambulance services always will be exempted. Even if it's air ambulance, bus ambulance, car ambulance, all that tempo ambulance, it will all be exempt and always. When you reach the hospital or a nursing home, you saw that everyone there was wearing a cap. Surprisingly, uh, we'll see what this cap is. Uh, these are people who will treat you and these are people who are wearing a cap and they were treating you. They said, listen, you need to get admitted because, uh, you know, you're not well or your leg is broken. So they need to operate and they had to admit you. And also they had to do a lot of diagnostic tests. You know, you can do these tests in the hospital as well as there are laboratories where you can do it. So they advised you to do a lot of diagnostic tests. And in the x-ray, it realized that your leg is broken. So they had to do a surgery. To do the surgery, the, they called an expert consultant. So they called a doctor or a surgeon externally from not from the hospital, from outside the hospital. And he charged the hospital and the hospital then charged you. And there, there was a big board which read that all the services in the hospital are under Hunase. You didn't know what is Hunase. You will know it once I explain the shortcut. Now, all this, guys, is something that is health services and health services is completely exempt. Because the logic is, if you're unwell, why should you pay paying GST? 
So here is it. Ambulance services, pretty self-explanatory, is exempt. CAP. What is CAP? Clinical establishments like hospitals, nursing home, etc. Authorized medical practitioners, a fancy word for doctor and paramedic. Paramedic are those nurses, etc. who help the doctors when they provide services to you. So all those doctors whom you visit, all the nursing homes, when they charge you money, that will be GST exempt. Next, you got admitted. While you were admitted, they put you up in a room. Hospital rooms are really, really boring. So you had to stay there. Plus there was food and plus there was treatment. Of course, of course, you didn't go there for their food or the stay, guys. You went there only for the treatment. So this is composite supply. If you remember composite supply, no problem. It should be naturally bundled. Is it naturally bundled? Yes. And what is the principal supply? Health treatment, which is exempt. So this entire uh, thing will be exempted. Next is diagnostic test. You go to any diagnostic test, x-ray, etc., that blood test, whatever you pay, I don't know if you ever noticed, but that amount will also be exempt. This is invert supply. We'll talk about invert supply at some time from now. And what is Hunase? Hunase basically is the line of medicine like homeopathy, Yunani, naturopathy, allopathy, Siddha, Ayurveda, and yoga. I repeat, guys, it's homeopathy to yoga and any healthcare services only if given in this kind of treatment will be exempt. In the exam, they say Ayurveda exempt, allopathy exempt, yoga exempt. But if they say Reiki treatment, then that will be taxable if the person giving you is registered under GST. Some changes here. One very big change, the room rent. Now, let's say you get a sea view room or you get a race course view room or you get an actor's house view room. Then in that case, the rent of the room can be high. So they said the exemption will be only up to 5,000 rupees. <clears throat> so if the room rent is 4,900 in the exam, exempt 5,900, the entire will be taxable. But this also has an exception, ICUs. ICUs and ICCUs, those fancy rooms, obviously they are more than 5,000. So they will always be exempt. So how do you remember this? Remember guys, all rooms, all rooms, yes. Up to 5,000 exempt, above 5,000 fully taxable, the room charges. And ICOs will always be exempted. All right. Next, another very important thing is a lot of people get, uh, you know, have a baby through IVF. So these IVF treatments, again, something that is new, this one is also exempted. They said that this is also healthcare services. So this one will also be exempted. Now let's talk about the ones which are taxable for a change. Now what all is taxable? Let's understand. Guys, if the hospital is giving food, if they give food to patients, that is exempted. So if they're giving food to patients, that is exempted, but food to outsiders, if your friends are visiting you and then they're having samosas in the canteen of the hospital, then that will be taxable. Any advertisement services or any renting services, whatever the hospital does, other than healthcare will all be taxable. So if in the ground floor, they've given a shop to some guy to on rent, that will be taxable. Uh, so these will be taxable. Next, any cosmetic surgery or any hair transplant or any uh, make uh, plastic surgery, so many people do this to look good. Some people get loose hair, so they want to get a hair transplant. All this is done to make yourself look good. Uh, guys, all this will be taxable. But the same cosmetic surgery, hair transplant or plastic surgery, if because of any a deformity at birth, you are deformed or an accident, etc., then in that case, it can also be exempted. So cosmetic surgery, hair transplant and plastic surgery, if because of any deformity, illness or any accident, this can also be exempted. So exemptions I'm writing here, taxable I'm writing here so that there is a small differentiation. Let's have a deco from the quick book of what this is healthcare services is. So we'll just type on say and we'll get the shortcut. Perfect. Healthcare services provided by CAP, Hunase, cosmetic hair transplant, we've understood. Rehab services, yes guys, mental health is also very important. So rehab services provided by people to the government. Example, you go to a government hospital and there is a psychiatrist or, or, or a psychologist and he is providing services to the uh, hospital, government hospital, that will be exempted. Next, ambulance we've discussed. Uh, provided to animals, yes, why should only humans be happy? Even healthcare services provided to animals by vets will be completely exempt. This one is removed, so I'm just going to read it out so you know that this is now taxable. Stem cell therapy. It's a therapy where your stem cells are protected so that later on they can be used. Let's not go too much into biology. Guys, this now will be exempted. Oh, sorry, this now will be taxable. Food and stay, exempted. Other input services, input we've not discussed yet. IVF treatment also exempt. Food to outpatients, room where the rent is more than 5,000 will be now taxable. Now invert services. Invert services means what? Or invert means what? Hospital buys an AC, GST, yes. 
hospital buys a uh, x-ray machine gst yes all that there will be gst so on all invert things there will be gst except one when they take services of other doctors example for that surgery there was a surgeon who gave services to a hospital that amount will be exempt there was a change here earlier there was another service called biomedical waste treatment that was exempted but now that is taxable so remember any input services by a hospital will be taxable except the one that is received from another doctor let's see ici questions on this this is healthcare services uh, yunani we'll type and we will get healthcare services so these are all healthcare services you don't need to read all of this i've already explained it to, it to you here we go good health medical center clinical establishment offers the following services reiki healing is taxable plastic surgery once a surgery was conducted to repair cleft lip of a newborn baby that one surgery will be exempt otherwise will be taxable air ambulance exempt palliative care good that this question we're doing what is palliative care i some people honestly unfortunately cannot be healed they are in a disease which is life taking and hence you have to just take care of them till they are no more unfortunately that is completely exempt because that's also health care alternate medical treatment by yoga is also exempt good health medical there also up to the cord blood bank uh, stem cell which is now taxable uh, since it's a clinical establishment there are the view that all input services are exempt no only one input services is exempt so this is the answer let's move ahead which of the following services provided by healthy wealthy nursing home are not exempt so you have to identify which is not exempt renting of rooms per day charge of 6000 to inpatients not exempt food supply to inpatients exempt healing of patients on ashram with exempt services in icu 12000 definitely exempt this one is another one congratulations we've done number 6 which is healthcare services i'm going to stop losing count now or i'm going to start losing count now because there are too many exemptions but this is another one and remember guys a practical question can come from any of these let's move on to the seventh one all right over to the next exemption i have lost count of the number but i think this is number 7 so let's move on to number 7 of the exemptions and this one is a very different one let's talk about it and let's understand it all right guys this is religious and charitable associations let's talk about that this is religious and charitable associations let's take an example guys in india there is a temple which is very famous tirupati temple it's a religious association yes it's a religious trust yes they have to be first for any exemption under gst they need to be registered there is a section called 12 aa or 12 abb ab of the income tax act but you don't have to remember because remember this is gst not income tax act just remember that they have to be registered and it can also be running a charity so let's assume two things one is there is tirupati temple and they also have a tirupati trust where they do charitable activities the government says that the four these four words h e r e these will be completely exempt so let's see what these are so if a religious or a charitable trust uh, like tirupati trust does something of nature of here then it will be exempt what is this here let's understand if they do any healthcare services now healthcare services even a trust can run a hospital uh, they do healthcare services like uh, treatment of people suffering from aids narcotic drugs etc all those will be exempt next if they do something for the environment including forest and wildlife so any social cause they're doing for the environment forest or wildlife these words you find that will be exempt anything they do for religion spirituality and yoga that will be exempt and last e is basically any education services but education services they are slightly different for the underprivileged a uh, skill development but this skill development in rural areas has to be for people who are 65 years or more only then it will be exempt so these are h e r e this will be completely exempt next what else is exempt old age homes guys old age homes are unfortunately a very sad state of affairs very old people who have no one to support Uh, them uh, are admitted or they go to old age homes if they are run by charity and if they are the charity is charging up to twenty five thousand per month the government says I don't want to charge GST on this this will be exempt remember only up to twenty five thousand per month this is run by charities as well as by the government we'll see in government services also next if these religious or charitable associations not religious but charitable association run any sports camps. but not professional sports camp recreational that means to learn tennis to learn cricket to learn football to learn hockey if they run any sports camp even that will be completely exempt so this is basically religious and charitable associations now you will always see in religious and charitable associations they generally if you go to tirupati temple you will see a lot of shops there 
you'll also see rooms where you can stay uh, and you'll also have any halls etc where you can get married name your kill children etc and do pujas so basically shops rooms and um, shops room and hall these will also be exempted but the amount should be lower than shop 10000 per month rent rooms 10000 sorry rooms 1000 and hall less than 10000 this is per event this is per month this is per day how do you remember? Obviously, this per month, per day, you'll understand because shops are taken always for month. Uh, rooms and halls are per event, per day. Now, how do you remember less than, equal to, etc.? As these charities generally charge less than because they're charity and hence that's how you remember less than. So, 900 rupees exempt, 1100 rupees taxable. This is how you have to remember. But these have to be in the precincts. That means around the charitable association. Example, Tirupati temple has rooms in Tirupati. Uh, next to the temple that will be exempt but Tirupati temple with the extra money has made a mall in Bangalore or Mumbai that will be taxable so this is religious and charitable association anything else like advertisement etc uh, that all uh, will all be taxable so this is what is exempt now some general exemptions guys any Hajj pilgrimage which is being organized by the Hajj committee not by private players by Hajj committee and Kumau Mandal uh, Nigam Vikas Nigam they organize trips to Chardham, etc. These will be exempted. Next, arts. In Indian traditional arts, if you are giving any training, example, Kathak dances, etc., that will also be exempt. This is all general. How do I remember sports? Sports is basically only for association. This arts is for all, A for arts, A for all. That's how you remember. Also, guys, while we're talking about religion, spirituality, and yoga, what if you join a yoga camp? Lots of these trusts, etc., they run yoga camp. It can be a residential yoga camp as long as there is yoga involved and that is the main thing that will also be exempt. This is religious and charitable trust. As anything inward is always taxable. Example, Tirupati Trust buys a laptop that will be taxable. The only one inward supply which will be exempt is if they take some services from abroad. So this is import of services. This is the only inward supply which will be exempt for a religious and charitable trust as long as the service they've imported is for charitable purposes. Let's read. Here or here, healthcare, education, environment, welfare, forest, uh, promotion of yoga, religion and spirituality. Remember, here it is only people about 65 years in rural areas. Residential yoga camps exempt. Hospital run by charities exempt. Lending of precincts less than, less than, less than. Recreational sports training exempt. Old age homes exempt. A recreational training in arts and culture, anyone. Old age homes, anyone. This religious uh, conduct or religious activities I have not explained. I'll explain to you that. Uh, if you are a Pandit, if you are a CA, then your services are subject to GST. But if you are a Pandit or a Maulana or a priest and you give services and you charge money, example, a Pandit comes and does your marriage and charges 10,000 rupees, in that case, it will be completely exempt. I am pretty jealous of these Pandits because we are sub subject to GST, but they are not. Uh, next, inward supplies, only one inward supply will be exempted. So, this is it. Let's move on to ICI illustration. Your charitable... We are not going to read this, but we are just straight away going to go to the question. Uh, these are the questions that we will tackle all together. Okay. Yes. Shiksha Academy and Educational Institution run by Sarva Seva Trust, a charitable registered trust, has organized a skill development program for the old age people above 65 years in Bangalore city. That will be taxable. Um, so this one will be taxable. Kumau Mangal Vikas Nigam supplies numerous services. Such services are exempt. Yoga camps are exempt. Bhavya Jyoti Foundation, a charitable trust, registered, organized a yoga meditation camp. Guys, this one will be completely exempt, even if it has food. Um, Manavta Sanstan, a charitable trust, has organized a basketball training camp for teenagers. This one will be exempt. Ramanan Joshi, a priest, charges 12,000 for conducting a religious ceremony. Ramanan Joshi, your services will be completely exempt. Durga Devi Trust manages the temple in the locality, it rents the commercial shops uh, for a rent of 10,000 per month per shop. Guys, this is very interesting. 10,000 basically it has to be less than exact 10,000 will be taxable. Gurudwara Community Hall, 9,000 will be exempt. Let's see this. Which of them will be liable to pay GST? Skill development and yoga training. 
uh, in city, this one will be taxable. This guys is religious and charitable trust. This is the seventh one. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is pretty interesting. As you know, India is an agrarian economy. We've been learning this from childhood. Now, what does that mean? That agriculture in India is very important and the government has a soft spot for agriculture. So, what is the agriculture-related services which are exempted? So, we are talking about now agriculture-related services. Let's look at a farmer. Let's talk to a farmer. What is he doing and how is it exempted? Guys, if you cultivate and you sell any agricultural produce, what is agricultural produce? Fruits, vegetables, cereals, pulses, etc. That is naturally grown. If you cultivate and sell, then it will be completely exempt. But you have to cultivate and sell. If you just sell, that will be taxable. Next, if you don't have the time to cultivate and sell, if you rent out your farmland, then that also because for agricultural purposes, it will be exempt, but only for agricultural purposes. Next, you're doing agriculture yourself, but you need some labor. So if you engage any labor and you pay labor charges, that also will be exempt. You need equipment like uh, tractors, etc. And you rent agri-equipment, guys, renting agri-equipment will also be exempt. But remember, purchasing it will be taxable. Now, you want to test your soil. So, soil testing, etc. will be exempt. Buying any seeds will be exempt. But we are not talking about that because those are goods. But anyways, these will again be exempt. So, this is exempt. Now, you need scientific ways to get better produce. So, that's called artificial scientific methods. Even that will be exempt if someone gives you that kind of service. To sell your service, you have to go to APMC market, Agricultural Produce Marketing Committee. They buy the produce from farmers and then sell it ahead. When they give you services to the farmers, that will also be exempt, but only related to selling the agricultural produce, that will be exempt. Till they are sold, you need to actually store them. So warehousing of agricultural produce will be completely exempt, including rice. Why am I treating rice separately? You'll know very soon. So warehouse of fruits, vegetables, cereals, pulses, including rice will be completely exempt. Now, what then is taxable? Guys, as you know, rice is not grown. What is grown is paddy. Paddy becomes rice. They do a treatment on which paddy becomes rice. This treatment, unfortunately, is taxable. So the treatment of converting paddy into rice is taxable. Next, anything which is secondary operation. Example, from tea leaf, you make tea. From coffee beans, you make coffee powder. All that tea, coffee, jaggery, etc. will all be taxable because that, guys, is not agricultural produce. You make sugar cane and from that you make jaggery. That uh, is taxable. Next, if you have any animals and you do any rearing of animals or any artificial insemination, artificial insemination basically means cows producing more cows artificially, all that is exempt except horses. So anything related to do with horses, why are they on the agricultural field, that will be taxable. So this is taxable. Uh, what else? I think this is about it. Is anything made for the rental or retail market will be taxable. I'll explain what this is. So if you made some uh, agricultural produce, that is no problem. Like say tomatoes, potatoes, etc. No problem. They'll be exempt. But if you make them into small packets so that you can sell them in DMART, now that one will be taxable. So anything which is converted, the form is converted. So that can be sold in retail market will be taxable. So this is what is agricultural produce and agricultural exemption. Remember, you, it has to be agricultural produce, not any artificial. Example, tomatoes are agricultural produce. Ketchup is not agricultural produce. Grapes are agricultural produce. Wine made of it is not agricultural produce. Let's start reading agriculture from here. Primary and secondary operation leading to cultivation of food grains, fruits and vegetables. Also rearing of an, all animals except horses is exempt. Renting of farmland. Testing of agricultural produce. Soil testing. Supply of farm labor. Supply of agri-machinery on rent. Loading, unloading, storage, warehousing of all agricultural produce, including uh, uh, rice and including minor forest produce will be exempt. Fumigation, basically pesticides in your warehouse. Earlier, guys, it used to be exempt. Now it is taxable. So this one is important. Agri-extension services or scientific methods is exempt. APMC is exempt. Artificial insemination is exempt. Uh, and retail market, that one will be taxable. Let's look at agricultural operation. I'm going to be looking at farm. farm. So here we go. This is basically rice. Let's type rice. And maybe we'll get to rice. All right, yes. All this is something that you already know. Don't worry about it. Let's straight go to the illustration. Mulchan has leased out to a farmer Tulti a vacant land for agriculture. Guys, this one will be exempt because it's for agricultural purposes. I'm uh, just reading this very important line. Milling of paddy into rice uh, will be taxable. 
that's it. There's not too much here. There will be some sums later on, which we'll be doing. This is agricultural services, very important. Let's also look at the quick book. This is Jan 21. This also has reference to exam question, which we will do at the end. All the ICM material questions will be done at one go along with exam question. Let's go to the next one. I've forgotten a number, but we'll go to the next one after agriculture. And moving ahead to the next exemption, it's pretty interesting because we use this exemption in everyday life. This is something that the way we travel, it's called passenger transport services. You and me, guys, we like to travel and I'm not talking about only travel relating to holiday, etc. In everyday life, we travel. We take Ubers, Rollers, Metros, trains, planes, buses, etc. How are they exempted or not? Let's understand this. The first one and the fastest mode of transport is air travel. We've recently seen people hitting each other in the uh, in the flight delays. Indigo is very famous for that. But government says that, listen, air travel is expensive. If you can afford air travel, then obviously you can afford to pay GST. So air travel will be taxable. But there are two exceptions. One is if you're taking a flight to or if you're taking a flight from any northeastern states. Now, you should know the northeastern states, uh, all the northeastern states. Including there is a uh, airport called Bag Dogra in West Bengal, which is very close to Assam. So even including that one, if you're taking that is an exception, and these all will be exempted. Second exception is there are small small airports now created under a regional connectivity scheme. In that case, up to three years under the regional connectivity scheme, that will also be exempt. So this is air travel is always taxable. So the next time you want to take a flight to go, I remember you'll have a lot of fun, but you'll have to pay GST. Next. Which is the next mode of transport? The next mode of transport is rail travel. So you took that train and you're going by train. A lot of new Vande Bharat trains have been opened. If you go by rail travel, the government says, listen, rail is important for the country. So we'll exempt it, but we will make two exceptions. The government, unfortunately, can't say you're comfortable. So if you're in AC, that means if you can feel cool breeze, etc., then it will be taxable. Or if it's the first class, then it will be taxable. So any of them, yes, any of them, if you're very comfortable, it will be taxable. Uh, this is rail travel. This was air travel. The next mode is by ships or waterways. Let's call it waterways. In India, we don't ha have too much of waterway travel. So if they say that if it's inland waterways like these rivers, they have small, small boats that will be completely exempt because they want to encourage it. And if it's outside, outside means not outside the country. But let's say from Mumbai to Goa, there's a cruise ship. From Chennai to Andaman, there's a cruise ship. That will also be exempt if it's non-tourism. That means... Will you ask every passenger if he's going to Andaman for tourism or not? No. Mainly, generally, a cruise ship or tourism, the cruise ship will be taxable. But a general passenger ship will not be uh, taxable because it's not for tourism. So that is waterways. This is rail and this is air travel. What is the other mode of travel? Is bus. Unfortunately, they don't call it bus. They call it stage carriage. Now, what is this stage carriage? We'll understand. Stage carriage basically means a carriage or an, uh, a mode of transport which is already staged. That means already ready to go somewhere like a bus. In that case, it is exempt except one condition because there is one C, there is one condition that is AC. If the bus is AC, then it will be taxable. That's how to remember it. Stage carriage will be exempt unless it is AC. Is another mode of transport if you want to ever go to Kurg or if you want to go to Goa or if you want to go to Lonavla or if you want to go to Jaipur from Delhi, then in that case, you book a Innova that is a contract carriage. What is a contract carriage? A car, a tempo, etc., which is only booked for you. You've contracted it for yourself. Contract carriage is two C's and hence that's a shortcut for two conditions. Contract carriage is also exempt unless it is AC, then it will be taxable. Or if it is for tourism, then it will be taxable. These are two conditions. How do you remember? Stage carriage 1C, one condition. Contract carriage 2C, so two conditions. Besides that, guys, we all try and halt autos, taxis, etc. in our respective cities. So if you take any metered cabs, metered basically means by which you stop by hand. In Bangalore, there is nothing called meter. But if you have metered cabs or metered autos, then in that case, it will be completely exempt. Then what is taxable? I'll tell you some things which are taxable here. Obviously, we've discussed some air travel, etc. taxable here also. But the specific ones are radio cabs. So any Ubers, Olas, even Rapido. So anything, any radio basically means you opened an app and you booked it. That will always and always be taxable. Next, uh, <clears throat> what else? Any of these contract carriage or stage carriage, example, bus ticket or any contract carriage you book through uh, any e-commerce operator. Example, you had to go to Mysore or you had to go to Lonavla or you had to go to Jaipur and you booked uh, overnight Ola or an Ola for you then through an e-commerce operator, then that will be taxable. This is called passenger transport services. Some additional points. 
in rail travel there is metro guys metro is now being made in many cities and the government wants to encourage people to use metro so even though it is ac it will completely always be exempted so this is passenger transport services let's have a look from here first mm, this is passenger transport services air travel is taxable except northeastern states including bagdogra inland water are exempt uh, otherwise it is if non tourism is exempt rail travel is exempt uh, ac and first class mono metro tram always exempt meter taxi exempt but radio is taxable contract carriage two conditions stage carriage one condition one more thing which is new is lots of companies have a drop and pick up facility for their employees in a bus example lots of companies say that you reach a particular station and from there we'll take you to the office and drop you back in the evening this is a contract carriage obviously it has to be non ac and if it is a fixed route not that it can be taken anywhere if it's a fixed route then the government says there will be no gst because it is non ac and it is a non tourism purpose all right um perfect let's look at illustrations from icai material Here we go. This is transportation, passenger transport services. All this you don't have to read. Let's go straight to the illustration. Ritraj has booked air tickets in economy class of flight from Delhi to Guwahati, Assam. This will be exempt because northeastern state. So, Brato has had a non-air conditioned bus. So, is it stage carriage? Yes. And only one condition should be non-AC. Then, perfect. That will be exempt. Um, by firms for transportation of the employees. Again, one condition. next 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 services by transportation of passengers not for tourism on a vessel if it's not for tourism then exempt which of the following services are not exempt transportation of employees in air condition then that is taxable transportation of passengers by railway sleeper class exempt or passengers in auto rickshaw exempt in economy class from delhi to manipur north eastern is exempt only the first one is taxable this is another one down which is called passenger transport services what is the next one we have transported ourselves let's transport goods next the next one is goods transport how do you transport goods is here and let's talk about goods transportation services next again very very logical and has some good shortcuts let's look at gts goods transportation services how do you like to transport your goods if you are in a hurry and you transport them by air also called courier also called express cargo all of this is fast and expensive and the government says if you can use these modes then you can pay gst these are taxable including this also includes angadia services angadias are basically local couriers even their services are taxable if they are registered under gst next how else would you transport your goods you can transport them through road we'll talk about that soon next we can transport them through waterways as you know waterways are good for the economy and hence the government says the waterways will be completely exempt so if you transport your goods through ship which is very rare in india that will be exempt next you want to transport your goods through railways example you manufacture let's say uh, these watches or this laptop or this camera or this uh, you know phone stand or any of this and you want to transport them through railways the government says why should i exempt you so railways will be taxable yes railways will be taxable except a shortcut called dr nam what is doctor name you will know soon but right now this is the shortcut so air courier express cargo which is fast taxable road we'll see waterways are completely exempt railways are taxable except doctor name what is doctor name you are using railways to transport defense material very important exempt relief material very important exempt newspapers every morning parents read it i read it you read it so exempt agricultural produce what kind of agricultural produce fruits vegetables pulses cereals exempt organic manure not fertilizer organic manure good for the economy exempt and last is some products like milk uh, and with milk there is salt also and there is food grains now what kind of food grains what do north indians have north indians have flour south indians have rice and everyone has pulses so this will also be covered so this is goods transport services through railway the only thing left now is road let's understand road transport as well so here it is road transport road transport i'm discussing separately because slightly different and important in road transport you have the option of using small tempos that is non gta non goods transport agent 
basically that means they are not very big agent they are a very small tempo let's say i want to transport some goods let's say some books from one institute to the other institute then in that case i use someone who is non gta that is a small tempo guy in that case he will not charge any gst it will be exempt but if you use any gta gta means goods transport agency yes goods transport agency how are they different they also use roads only yes they also use trucks or tempos but they give a consignment note they take your name details insurance etc all that is gta in gta how does it work here it how, how it works if gta provides services to the government example government is transporting the goods how dare you charge gst to the government this one is completely exempt if gta is transporting goods just one second so we're talking about gta and gta if they provide services to transport of goods to the government how dare they charge gst to the government so that is exempt next let's say you're moving from bangalore to chennai or from mumbai to pune and you transfer household items books etc in that case this is basically gta uh, giving services to unregistered persons now in that case also if it's personal then again there will be no gst so this will also be completely exempt next year also there is dr nam again yes dr nam is coming back and you know dr nam a defense relief newspapers agriculture reduce organic manure and milk um, salt and grains this will also be exempt in the case of gta so dr nam is here as well so this is goods transport agency or goods transport services let's recap it first from the quick book this is gts air transport courier express cargo taxable indian waterways exempt Railway transport, if it's Dr. Nam, rail Dr. Nam earlier, but rail equipment now is removed. Uh, now it is taxable. So if you're using railway to transport railway equipment, that will be subject to GST. Um, GTM, again, Dr. Nam, if provided to the government and if to unregistered person, it will be exempt. And remember, whenever GTA provides services to some registered person, it will be taxable at 5% under RCM or 12% under FCM. That means if they charge you 1 lakh rupees and it's taxable, I'm assuming, and they charge you 1 lakh rupees, if it's under RCM, then you will have to pay 5% 5 directly to the government. But if it's under FCM, you will pay 12% to the GTA, he will pay to the government and he can take credit. This is Goods Transport Agency. Let's move here and let's see Goods Transport from here. So, goods transport is your Hari Prasad owns a truck and operates himself. It's a very small tempo guy. That services will be, uh, it is without issuance of consignment loan. So, it's non GTA, it will be exempt. Which of the following by Sundar transporters are not exempt? So, we have to identify the one which is taxable. Transport of organic manure is exempt. Transportation of household, household items is exempt. Transportation of goods to Malhotra and company, an unregistered partnership firm. Uh, transportation of goods provided to government is exempt. Uh, to Malhotra and company, this is for business purposes. And hence, even if it's unregistered, this will be taxable. So C1 will be taxable. All right. So we now move to the next one. So very few left. Now we are done with passenger transport and goods transport. Next, which is very important, is education. When you got educated, is there GST on that? Let's see the next one. All right, Padega India, Padega India. That's the notion, guys. Education should not be taxed. I agree. So the government has given some good exemptions for education. This could be a good sum also. So I'm talking about education services. Let's understand how education services are either taxable or exempt here on the screen. First, what is an educational institution? Let's understand that. An educational institution is the first one where we went, preschool. Or the one that you went after that, that is school, uh, which is typically till 12th standard. Some places like Mumbai have till 10th standard. Then there is college. And then there is vocational education. Vocational basically means they teach you how uh, life skills like carpentry, hardware, uh, etc. So these are all educational institutions. Now, they are providing services to students. They are also providing some services to faculty and they are also providing services to staff. Then in that case, SFS, if they provide education services or services to students, faculty and staff, then this will be completely exempt. So if you've gone and paid your college fees, you will notice that there will be no GST on that. That is completely exempt. Now, in this case, let's lead a little more. What if it's boarding school? Boarding school basically means they give you food, stay and studies. That's a composite supply. Main thing is studies and hence it will be also exempt. Any other Industrial training institutes recognized by the government will be completely exempt. IIMs, uh, those colleges, but they are long duration course, that is one year and more, uh, one year and more, even that one will be completely exempt. 
anything recognized by the government um, all these government educational programs will be completely exempt any maritime courses which teach you how to sail on the ship etc those will be completely exempt uh, next any skill national skill development corporation they give any courses that will be exempt so these are the kind of exemptions that are given to educational institutions so is there anything taxable yes there is if you like foreign courses like acca cpa unfortunately all these foreign courses will be taxable Next, if you like private education, if you like these classes, Yashas Academy, Pinnacle Education, SMAT Education, etc., any of these private classes, those will be taxable. There will be GST on that. Yes, there will be GST on that. Any hobby class, like a tennis class or a swimming class, etc., only hobby class, if it's not with education, it's education, then it's composite supply, then it's taxable. Sorry, that's exempt. Only hobby class will be taxable. In colleges, they also give placement services like IITs. Uh, when you pass out, they help you place and they charge some money to the company to give the students to the companies that will be taxable. So any other thing also will be taxable here. This is what is exempted. Now, while this is outward supply, there is something called inward supply also very, very important. Let's talk about which inward supplies are exempt. First, if you're a preschool and up to school, if you're till here, preschool, school, up till here, then any services in the nature of TCS, Example, to bus uh, for the students from school to home and back. If you have a transporter who provides you that bus and he charges you 1 lakh rupees, he will not charge you any GST. That inward supply is exempt. Caterer, everyone remembers a school canteen in that the food supplied by a caterer, they will charge the school, but they will not charge any GST. And any security and housekeeping, that also will not be any GST on inward supplies, TCS. Remember, this is only to preschool and school, only for within the school. So catering outside the school, taxable, catering in the school, exempt. Of course, this was good, but colleges felt bad about it. So colleges, they also asked for an exclusive exemption. So they also got one. If colleges get any services to convert journals into online journals, like your textbooks, etc., convert into online journals, that kind of services when colleges get for online journals, that will be completely exempt. And one inward service is common for both, which is the one which is common. Or whether it's school, whether it's college, they run exams. Now, when they run exams, they need services like examining, uh, booking a hall, uh, getting papers set, getting papers corrected, all the services related to exam, not goods, only services, remember. So if you buy paper for the question paper printing, that will be taxable, but the printing services will be exempt. All this is exempt. These are the three inward supplies that you should remember. TCS, remember, remember that's only for preschool and school. This is only for colleges and this is common for everyone. This is your educational exemption. Let's read education exemption from here. Healthcare we've done, yeah, here we go. So first one, education institution, what does it mean? A students, faculty and staff, entrance exam, vocational courses, ITIs, national skill development, is even international schools or IBs. These are also exam because their name are international, but they give education in India only. And the only curriculum is international, so th that will be exam. Remember, this is important. Government courses, maritime courses, any course recognized by law, boarding, lodging is also exempt. Supply of food is also exempt. IIM courses, one year or more is exempt. Private coaching is taxable. Uh, sponsored by the government, then it is exempt. These are all the different, different taxable. These are the three input services. Very, very important. Let's look at ICI illustration from education. So here we go. This is education. All right. Very important thing. Here we go. This is education services. No, this is not. One minute. This is agriculture. Yes, I can see students here. Yes, education. So all this is the context which we already discussed. Let's see. Dharam Institute of Technology, a private engineering college, offers postgraduate engineering programs. It will completely be exempt because it is basically a government-run course. Little Ways Public School is a school located in Tamil Nadu. Again, exempt. It has two branches. By the way, if a college offers dual degree, one is a, a, a government recognized, one is not recognized, then it will be a taxable because it's a mixed supply. Just forgot to add that. Kaladrishti ITI is engaged in providing skill development courses. This one will be exempt. Superminds a coaching institute, provides coaching for institute of, this is a private coaching and hence it will be taxable.
All right. This one it is little millennium of preschool now. So Mumbai has subscribed the online journal on child development. Guys, this is online education, but this is a school, so this will be taxable. SM Transporters, Service of Transportation of Students and Faculties to Pathwheel School, that is exempt. Shiksha College Offering Degree has to conduct a half yearly exam. Any service related exam is exempt. Gyani Public School is hired Shavida Services for Security and Housekeeping. It's a school, so it is exempt. Which of the following educational services are not exempt? So, which are taxable? J means entrance exam conducted. Entrance exams are government run, exempt. Long duration programs are by IIMs, exempt. Coaching for preparation of UPSC, guys. UPSC, ye uh, question karne ka tarika thoda casual hai, but right hai, because this one, coaching for UPSC preparation, any private coaching will be taxable. This is another one down, very important education services. This one it is. Let's move to the next one. After the heavy one on education, let's take a very simple one. This one is legal services. Guys, just like you're preparing to become a CA, there are people who are preparing to become lawyers and once they become lawyers, will their services be taxable or exempt? I see it, by the way, all our services are taxable, but here is a lawyer. So let's talk about a lawyer or it can be a senior advocate, someone who's in practice for many years, or it can be a firm of advocates. So in this case, will it be taxable? Will it be exempt? Let's check out. As if they provide legal services to the government, how dare they charge GST to the government? This one will be exempt. If they provide services to unregistered persons like you, uh, then that will also be exempt. If they provide services which are personal in nature, example, unfortunately, you're going through a divorce or you beat up someone and there's a court case, that one will be exempt. So then which one is taxable? And when they provide services to each other also, it will be exempt. Example, one lawyer providing services to another lawyer on some matter will also be exempt. So then which is taxable when they provide services to a business entity? And business entity who is liable to be registered based on last year's turnover, that means a big business entity, I call it a big business entity, which is liable to be registered, uh, then in that case it will be taxable. And as you know, guys, uh, legal services are taxable under RCM. So example, if a lawyer provides services to Amazon, which is a big business entity, Amazon will pay the GST under RCM directly to the government. So this is lawyer. Only one exception here. If you're a senior advocate, and you're providing services to a lawyer or to a firm, you're so senior that the government says this one will be taxable and there will be no GST exemption here. Services provided by a senior advocate to a lawyer, that means a single small lawyer is engaging a big lawyer and in that case it will be subject to GST. So this is legal services. We'll do one, two more before we start reading. So legal services is done. Now, as many of us live in housing societies, they are called resident welfare associations. Example, you live in a building which is 20 story and in there are there are 100 flats, all the 100 flats come together and make a resident welfare association. And there are some common expenditures like light, water, maintenance, which they spend. And then they give a bill to each one of them, which is called maintenance charges. These maintenance charges, if they are up to 7,500 per month per apartment or per house, then it will be exempted. That means smaller apartments, smaller houses up to 7,500 will be exempted. But if it's more than 7,500, then it will be taxable, provided the Regist Regist resident welfare association is registered under GST. Let's take an example. Let's say your bill is 8,000. Will it be taxable? Yes. But the RWA should be registered. That means it should be a big RWA. Now, so big RWA, small RWA. Let's take an example. So this is a registered RWA. 7,200 is a bill exempt. 8,200 is a bill taxable. This is a non-registered RWA. That means it's a very small resident welfare association. Then whether it's 7,200 or 8,200, both will not be taxable. So remember, it's only when the RWA is registered. So this is registered welfare association. Just like that, there are trade associations also like steel manufacturers association and there are labor unions also. In that case also, whatever amounts they charge from the members will be exempt. In case of labor, it is exempt up to 1,000 per year contribution. Example, you're a part of a trade or labor association and you paid 900 per year, it is exempt. But 1,900 per year, it will be taxable. So this is what is a resident welfare association. These are called unincorporated bodies. Unincorporated basically means they're not incorporated, they're not companies, but this is the GST implication in this case. Let's take another very small one next, which is called leasing services. What is leasing services? Leasing services basically giving some things on rent 
as leasing services has only one exemption we watch out as here is the government it can be state government central government local authority and they are giving away land yes they are giving away land on rent this will generally should be taxable there will be exemption if it's for two purposes one if it's for industrial or financial purpose so the purpose should be industrial or financial that means the land should be given to an industry or to financial like a bank etc and the re lease rent should be more than 30 years if both these conditions are fulfilled then it will be exempt so remember leasing service is very simple so let's read all these three from the quick book so i'm reading first this is resident welfare association Services by trade union exempt. Services of society, agriculture is exempt up to 1,000. This is a labor union. And cooperative housing society is up to 7,500 per month. Next. Legal services. Legal services provided by lawyers, senior advocates and former advocates provided to unregistered business entities. Government, personal purposes to other lawyers is exempt. Only payers taxable is business entities whose turnover last year was more than the threshold limit. And legal services provided by a senior advocate to advocates or to a firm Basically, to big people giving services to smaller ones, in that case, it will be taxable. And leasing services, long lease, more than 30 years by the government to an entity uh, for industrial and financial use or by the government or by any entity in which 20% or more holding is of the government. So I told you central, state, government, local authority or any entity also in which 20% or more held by the government but to condition industrial and financial purpose and it should be for more than 30 years the lease. Let's move on to the next one. Again, the next one is not very difficult. It's pretty simple. Let's see what this is. Um, this one is services provided to the government. Yes, you heard it right. You are providing services to the government. How dare you charge GST? Yes, but if there are some cases where there will be GST. I'll tell you where. As you're providing services to the government. And this is pure labor. Pure labor basically means there is only labor nothing else and this is in relation to some of the government's work which is interested in the constitution example let's say the government has to take care of street lights and you are giving them services to repair the street lights in that case if it's pure labor then it is completely and completely exempt this one is here pure services without any goods are completely and completely exempt next same street light you are providing them not just the labor but also the street lights and the total amount of the goods in this contract is up to 25%. If it's up to 25% goods, then also it will be exempt if provided to the government. Same. So the percentage is important. 25%, no problem. 24, no problem. 26, problem. It will be fully taxable. Uh, next, if you run any ration shops, that means you're running a ration shop and you're charging some amount to the government, that will be exempt. And if you are basically helping the government run the GST network, GSTN, then that will also be exempt. Very important, the next one came in the exam. If you are giving a training program and the government is organizing the training program or the government is sponsoring the training program up to 75%. This was earlier 70%. They made it 75%. Example, the government wants to train people on how to use computers. And they are engaging you as a trainer and you are providing services to the government, training services, where the cost, 75% or more the cost is borne by the government, then that also will be completely exempt this is services provided to the government. Here it is. Pure services provided to central government, state government, local municipality, panchayats are exempted. Uh, services by GST and fair price shop is nothing but ration shops. Composite supply by 25% is goods, no problem exempt. As this is services provided to the government. Uh, we've run all of this. Services by specified bodies. Let's read it directly from here. Specified bodies earlier included provident fund authority. A coal provident fund national pension scheme which are still exempt but there are two bodies which are now taxable SEBI providing services and IRDA insurance regulatory development authority now providing services are taxable so remember guys in the exam RBI SEBI IRDA uh, so these three sir is a good shortcut SEBI IRDA and RBI these providing services will be taxable so remember that let's check what else is left from the bottom let's check these are some additional points I'll give you additional all together unincorporated we done entry to events we've done, performance of an artist we've done, sponsorship of events. Guys, you are basically sponsoring an event and that event is organized by a university, a panchayat, an Indian Olympic Association. In that case, why do you want to make that sponsorship expensive? And hence, there will be no GST. Legal services we've done, leasing we've done, services provided to the government we've done by 
specified bodies, general insurance, we've done life insurance, we've done banking and financial services, we've done goods transport, we've done passenger transport, construction is left, I'll talk about it, postal services left, let's talk about these two. All right. Now construction and postal, let's talk about postal. I don't know the last time I went to a post office, but apparently they still exist and they exist everywhere in the country. Guys, they're a great setup. And postal services are important for people to send messages and you know small items to each other. And hence there is an exemption here. So books, RIP is a shortcut. If you're sending any book post or any registered post or any inland letter or any normal basic post, then in that case, these will be exempt. That means if you go and send a nice postcard to some relative, that will be completely exempt, no tax. But if you send a, a speed post, that will be taxable. They give you other services also like insurance, etc. All those will also be taxable. Next, there are some money services like you have pension services. You have money order, which is also called postal order. These are also exempt. So pension, money order, postal order provided by the postal is also exempt. So in the exam, speed post, taxable. Insurance, taxable. Only these books, RIP and pension, money order, postal order. These are exempt. This is postal services. Here we go, postal services. Speed post, insurance provided by post offices are taxable. And next, next and last, let's look at construction services. And then we look at the additional ones altogether. All right. Construction services. Guys, you're building a house. And if you're building a house and someone is giving you services, pure labor services. That means no material, only labor. And this is under a PM Avas Yojana. There is PM Avas Yojana whereby Prime Minister said, listen, we'll build houses. And if you building houses, they will pay you money. If you engage a laborer or a labor contractor, that service will be exempted. Next, if you're building an independent house, but it should be actually a new house, it should not be reconstruction. In that case, also pure labor. I said it has to be pure labor. It does not have to be goods and labor. If that is the case, then it will be taxable. Next, there is a tube well and you're mounting an electricity tower to supply electricity to, to the tube well. Then in that case, the electricity company will charge you money, but they'll not charge you GST. This one is also exempt. So these are some of the exemptions in construction. Construction services, postal services. Guys, this is services provided by the government. Now I want you all to do one work. This is the quick book. Use the quick book to understand, to read services provided by the government. So this is something that you have to do as self-study. Healthcare we've done. Education we've done. Agriculture we've done. We've done all the exemptions. Now let's go to the additional points. Additional are all bundled together are small, small exemptions which are bundled together into one. Let's see what this is and then we'll go to the ICI questions and then to the exam questions. Guys, let me explain what is this additional points here. The first is you are going to Nepal or Bhutan to watch women's FIFA organized by a recognized sporting body. What is this? This is a shortcut to understand different different exemptions. Let's take the first one. If you are selling your entity as a going concern, guys, right now Paytm is under trouble. So if Paytm decides to sell its company for let's say 100 crore rupees or 1000 crore or 10,000 crore rupees to someone else as a going concern, then in that case, this will be exempt. If you are transporting cargo goods to Nepal and Bhutan are friendly neighbors, of course, the other side is not very friendly, but Nepal, Bhutan is friendly and hence transporting of cargo will be exempt from GST. Women's FIFA 2017, again, this is not important, but that any services around that will be exempt and recognized sporting body. As recognized sporting body means BCCI, means Indian Olympic Association, when services are provided to them. By whom? By people who are on the ground, example, sportsmen, example, referees, example, umpires, example, coaches, uh, example, team managers. These are all the people, guys, who provide services to a recognized sporting body. Example, Virat Kohli providing services to BCCI. There will be an exemption, yes, but only people on the ground, that's a shortcut. So what if it's a commentator? 
taxable. What if it's a physio taxable? Only people who are sports persons, referees, umpires, coaches, and managers, only those will be exempt. And one recognized sporting body providing services to another recognized sporting body, even that one will be exempt. So this is going to Nepal and Bhutan uh, for um, FIFA World Cup, Women's FIFA 2017. Next, if you're going to Nepal and Bhutan, what are you going to be doing here? You're going to be renting your residence, your hotel room, and three of your vehicles you're going to be renting. This is another shortcut. So guys, are you renting? Yes. What are you renting? Residence. Guys, if you're use, renting a residence, then it is completely exempt. But this is only if there are two conditions. I'll talk about it. But renting residence is exempt, remember. But there is a, a modification here. This is very important from an exam perspective. If you're renting a hotel room, guys, earlier hotel rooms up below a certain amount were exempted from GST, but now no more. Now in the exam, if there's any hotel room, whether it's 500 rupees or 50,000 rupees, that will be subject to GST. And three vehicles. What are the three vehicles? Let me explain here. It's a vehicle more than 12 passengers, generally a minibus or a bus given to a straight transport undertaking that is completely exempt. Example, you have a bus and you're giving to a safe transport undertaking more than 12 passengers, a bus, or that will be exempt. You will charge them money, but not GST. Again, more than 12 passengers, but electric vehicle to local authority, not state transport here. It's local authority. This is exempt. So how do you remember it? That local authorities like electricity. And last guys, if you're giving a goods vehicle, a truck, a goods carriage to a GTA example, you have some trucks, you're giving it on rent to a GTA, that will also be exempt. There are three vehicles. Now let's talk about residence. When will residence renting be exempted? Two conditions. First, if you're giving it to any unregistered, not registered, giving it to them, no problem. And if you're giving it to a registered proprietor and he's using it for non-business purpose, in these two cases only it will be exempt. First, unregistered. Second, if you're giving it to a registered person, but it's a proprietor and he's doing for non-business purpose. So example, you're giving it to a retired person. No, no GST. You're giving it to a school student or a college students on PG. No problem. You're giving to a bank. Problem. Taxable. Registered proprietor and should be using for non-business. Only then it is exempt. All right, so here is Nepal and Bhutan. You're going abroad, renting your residence, hotel and three vehicles. And what did you see there? Here is the continuation of the shortcut. Electric news information satellites exhibit tolls. You saw that there were electric news satellites abroad, which were exhibiting tolls. What is this? Another silly shortcut to remember is any electricity supply will be completely exempt, but only the electricity charge, meter rent, meter changing, uh, any other charges will be taxable. Only electricity supply will be exempt. Collecting news, if you supply news to some channel, foreign channel, and you give them news and you charge them money, it will be exempt. Satellite launch services from Sri Hari Kota or any other place in India by Antariksh or ISRO this used to be exempt, but now not anymore. So now we charge for it GST as well. Exhibitions, but only if they're organized abroad. So example, if you abroad, uh, if you organize an exhibition abroad and you're charging people, there will be no GST. And on tolls, there will be no GST. This is another shortcut done and dusted. What else did you see abroad? You saw that abroad foreigners or foreign regions had incubated pool toilets and libraries. Yes, another and the last one is all these foreign missions, all these uh, consulates, all these embassies, foreign embassies, foreign consulates, when they provide services, exempt. Cold chain, not facility, but cold chain information, how to run a cold chain, etc. When you give information and you charge money, they will be exempt from GST. Toilets, if someone charges a small fee for toilets, exempt from GST. And public libraries, if they charge a small fee, exempt from GST. Incubate. Incubate basically means like a startup. The government is incubating you. They're giving you some place and they're giving you some money. And in that case, there will be no GST on that incubate or that person which is incubated by the government. Uh, as long as the turnover does not cross a certain limit, 
let's read that from here hotels is removed launch of satellites is removed incubity if the government has incubated you or uh, sponsored you then up to 50 lakh rupees and within 3 years there will be no gst on you and if these are all the different different exemptions use this quick book it's in the same link of may 24 to get more and now we are looking at more and more sums remember a practical sum from this chapter is very very highly likely in your exams let's look at the sums here we go exam supply means supply of any goods and services or both which attract nil rate of tax and which may be wholly exempt from tax but excludes non-taxable supply no it has three ends nil non-taxable and notification services provided by an entity registered under section 12 ab of the income tax act are exempt from gst if such services are provided by way of charitable activities and, and I elaborate the term charitable h-e-r-e -E, health healthcare palliative care aids narcotics that healthcare, education skill development but in rural areas for people above 65 uh, our religion uh, spirituality yoga and environment wildlife and forest Examine which of the following independent cases are exempt from GST. Food supplied by the canteen run by a hospital to the inpatients as well as advised by the doctors. Inpatients is exempt. A resident welfare association charging 6,000 per month, 500 per month is also exempt. An individual acts as a referee in a football match. A referee is on the field. This one will be exempt. Next, RXL manufactures a beauty soap with the brand name Forever Young. It has organized a concert to promote its brand. Anna Kapoor, brand ambassador, will always and always be taxable. Examine whether GST is exempted. Service provided by a private transport operator to scholars high school. I remember TCS to a school is exempt. Vehicle parking to general public. There is no exemption. There is GST on this. A state transport undertaking has hired motor vehicles meant to carry 8 to 10 passengers from fast cab renting. Remember, renting up to more than 12 passengers. This one will be taxable because only up to 8 to 10 passengers. In Nana Engineering, educational institutions conducted an entrance test. Guys, for an entrance test, everything will be exempt. Bablu Transport is a GTA transported relief material. Guys, if it's relief material, it is always and always exempt. Remember, Dr. Nam. Kayan Enterprises, an event organizer, provided services to Breathing Wall by way of organizing a business exhibition in New Delhi. In New Delhi, it is taxable. If it's abroad exhibition, then it is exempt. ST Limited has given higher fire trucks to T2 transporters. If you give goods transport or goods carriages to a GTA, then in that case, it, this one will also be exempt. As you remember the three vehicles and this is how the question paper looks like. Good going guys. I'm just going to end these pages so we can open up to our exam questions. All right, it's an auspicious time when we look at exam questions. So this is IDT paper, May 23, DT IDT, of course, tax paper. Let's look at GST part and let's look at the exemption part, if any, from this chapter and let's try to solve it. Um, not here. Yes. Purchase business class air tickets for intrastate travel from Guwahati Airport Assam to Dibrugarh Airport Assam for its exclusive executive employees. Will there be GST on it? Yes, because they are business class. Economy class, northeastern states, there will be no GST. Some implication of this here. Um, yes. Jayesh is a registered supplier of Mumbai. Basically, he's registered, he's supplying, and SL supply leads to liability. Let's see. One of them I can read your amount received from ABC company for performance of classical dance in one program, 1,74,500. Will it be subject to GST? Yes. You know from this chapter, more than 1,50,000. So it will be subject to GST. Consideration received for one month rent from registered individual person for renting of residential dwelling for use as residents. Guys, if you are giving it to an individual that is a proprietor, uh, as user residents, there will be no GST in this case. Again, two things that we saw from here. Pay to an unregistered GTA for various consignments or transportation of goods by road. There will be GST. Yes, there will be GST. This one has been amended now. The price, it used to be up to 1500 exemption, but don't worry. Don't remember that number. It's now uh, all, everything, anything you transport through GTA is exempt, is taxable unless it is Dr. Nam. All right. 
very very interesting guys mr sham das was admitted to suraksha hospital in mumbai for two days in relation to diagnostic of removal of stones from his kidney for the said services suraksha hospital charged following from mr ram das room rent 7000 per day for two days taxable yes operation theater charges not taxable doctors consultation not charges other services not charged Char taxable in each of the boss scenario explain whether suraksha hospital should levy gst or not no only in one case it should levy that is the first case only in this case there should be gst other than room rent all other nature of expenses are exempt guys if you if you think you have to write a lot for a question like this no listen this is four line answer given by icai all right that's may 23 paper good job let's move to the next one which is november paper november 22 here we go let's look at all the exam questions as well we'll go to idt part yes services provided to the state government of karnataka for conducting a computer training program for its employees total expenditure of the said program was 90000 of which 60 63000 that is 70% This now has become seventy five, but that earlier used to be six six seventy. This was exempted. Um, what else is there from this chapter? Yes, Darun provides services as a business facilitator, Zio Bank, by facilitating opening bank accounts in villages in rural branches in Punjab, and earn a commission of twenty two lakh in the month of April. Will there be any GST? No. Um, this is basically liable for registration. But anyways, we are looking at from a GST perspective. There will be no GST in that case. I'm just checking if there is any other sum. No, there is no other sum. So this paper had very less from this chapter, but it's unpredictable. Mostly there will be a sum in your exam at least. Another one. This let's go to the IDT part. Here we go. This is the IDT part. Under the GST law, taxes on taxable services supplied by the central government or the state government to a business entity in India payable by recipient of services, save the exception. This is that self-study thing that I told you. There are four exceptions, uh, which are called trap. One is transport. Once you see that, you can do the question after that. One is transport of goods and passengers. Uh, they are under FCM. Example: When you go by railways and you there is GST, they will charge you. You will pay them. Let's say one thousand rupees railway ticket plus hundred rupees GST. You will pay them eleven hundred, and they will pay it again to the government. So that is trap T. Is for transportation of goods and passengers. P is for postal services. R is for railway, and T uh, R A is for um, uh, aircraft and vessel leasing. In these four cases, even if it's provided by the government, it will become taxable under FCM. So again, this is from that same chapter, that self study part. The company had given on hire five trucks to one of the transporters of Varodra. Guys, giving on rent five trucks uh, is basically exempt from GST. The company sought legal consultancy services for its business from advocates. Guys, legal consultancy, but received by a registered person, it is taxable under RCM. So, some indirect questions from this chapter here. 
Excellent, guys. Uh, AB Limited, a registered company in Chennai, has provided the following services transportation of students, faculty, and staff from home to college and back. Uh, this is college. This will be taxable only if it's school, preschool, etc. It will be exempt. Online monthly magazine containing question bank and latest updates in law to students of PQR Law College. Online, guys, this is exempt because to college. Housekeeping to T Coaching Institute. No, 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 taxable. Security services of school, exempt. Services of providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner to students of ABC Medical College. TCS catering is only up till school. College, it will be taxable. So, first one taxable. Second one exempt. Taxable. Only second and fourth are exempt. Second and fourth are exempt. Here we go. Second and fourth are exempt. Otherwise, it is taxable. All right. Good job there. We'll continue with July paper. We'll not go all out. We'll just go till July and we'll end it here. Section B. Uh, it manufactures a beauty soap, concert, Mahima, brand ambassador. We've done this, guys. Proceeds is 1,25,000. Because it's a brand ambassador, it will be taxable. Uh, if the concerts are donated, proceeds are donated to a charitable organization, still it will be taxable, guys. What you do with the money does not matter. If it's for, for as a brand ambassador, then the amount will be taxable under GST. So this is it. Uh, we will now end this. Guys, one of the biggest chapters of GST is exemption. This video will be really helpful today also, later on also. People get so scared, they leave this chapter. Watch this video. Even if you're bored, just watch this video till the end and revise it with me. Like this, I do every chapter. If you have any doubts and DAX, you can always WhatsApp me to pro purchase my recorded lectures at CA Inter and CA Final, uh, to attend my live lectures in Bangalore and Mumbai, and to buy material from me, you can always contact me. The details are always given in the description box. Watch this video, spread it to your friends, whoever finds GST exemption chapter difficult. All the best and see you.